Hello everybody and welcome to my embroidered hat tutorial. Um, if you're here, it probably means that you've purchased a kit and you're going to follow along with the video or maybe you have downloaded the PDF for this uh, project and you're going to be following along as well. Or maybe you've just stumbled upon this video and if that's the case, feel free to uh, follow along as well with your own hat at home. Um, yeah, everybody's welcome. So today I'm going to be walking you guys through exactly how to do this pattern. Um, this is our pattern. We're going to stick it on the hat. It's a sticker. Um, I used sulky paper to print off the patterns. So basically sulky paper is water soluble stabilizer. Um, it comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets and you can put it in the printer so you can actually print directly on it, which is what I've done here um, to create the pattern. I actually drew it out first and scanned it onto my computer and then I was able to print it out. If you don't have any printable paper, another option is using a water soluble pen and you can draw directly onto your fabric that way and create your own design. So for this project, you'll need a three inch hoop, a pair of scissors. I'm using a size five DMC needle, which looks like this. Um, and I'm going to be using all of these colors. Um, if you have a kit, all these colors will be supplied in your little pouch. In terms of what you're stitching on, um, we're doing a hat today, but this pattern could be applied to any article of clothing or in a hoop, however you guys want. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide where I want to put my pattern on the hat. And I'm thinking I want to do kind of like this, an off to the side look. So uh, I'm going to peel the sticker so peel the, the sticker off like that. And then I'm going to place it onto my hat where I want it to be. And I'm going to place it like this. Now, when you're placing your sticker, be careful not to place it too close to the brim. The reason being when we're stitching at the back, and using a hoop. It's difficult to get really, really close to the brim of the hat. So I would say try to keep it, you know, nearly an inch away if possible. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to put it right down here. We just wouldn't be able to stitch that well down there. And smooth out your sticker just to make sure it's fully on there. And this will provide us a guide for our stitching. Um, and when we're finished at the end, this is water soluble. So all we have to do is run tap water over it and this paper will disappear, leaving us nice clean stitches. The first flower we're going to stitch on the hat are the sunflowers. Um, so grab your hoop, unscrew it, take out the smaller piece, and you're going to pull back this part of the hat and place it so that you've got the two sunflowers within the circle. Then you're going to take the larger uh, portion of the hoop, make sure it's all the way extended, just make it easier on yourself. And if you have to readjust that smaller hoop, do so. And you're going to stick it on top. This takes a little bit of trial and error and press down and then tighten it a little bit and just readjust it so that your fabric is nice and taut and then tighten the rest of the way. So it should look something like that. The first color we're going to be using is DMC 3820, which is like a nice yellow. Um, so you're gonna take a strand of floss. I usually do my arm length plus to my other shoulder um, or whatever you're comfortable with. And you're gonna split it into threes and slowly split the floss. You're gonna thread your needle and pull it all the way through till the ends are together. Oops. 
and make a knot. One thing to mention, um, if you decide to do small parts of this project um, at a time, I wouldn't recommend leaving the hoop on for an extended period of time. Take it off after every session, um, just in order to help uh, decrease the crease mark that it will create. Um, it will go away eventually, but the longer the hoop stays on the hat, the more of a crease you'll have. So we're ready to start stitching. Um, we always start from underneath. I like to pull back this part of the hat just to clear my path under there. Um, you can start wherever you want. Um, we're gonna start with this lower sunflower and I'm gonna be using straight stitch. So a straight stitch is just coming up from underneath, pulling it all the way through. And I'm going to the end here and pulling it back down. Now the one variation that I'm going to take on this stitch is that instead of starting my next stitch down at the same point, I'm going to start it up beside it. Um, this will save fab, or, sorry, this will save floss on the underside, um, and just generally I find it easier. So for this project, I'm going to do two stitches in between every line, so that my flower is nice and full. I'm coming. So again, coming up, going back down, and then I'm coming up right beside it over here, pulling it all the way through, and going back down. You will find working with a hat if this is your first time. You may find it a little bit harder to work with than other fabrics you've experienced. Um, the reason being it's a little bit thicker and you're going to have to press a bit harder. Um, for this reason, some people like to use thimbles. Um, so if you're finding that your fingers are getting just really, really tired, that's normal. But you also might consider using a thimble to help push the needle through. So I'm gonna keep repeating this process. So I had just enough floss to make it all the way around, but if you start to run out of floss before you finish, no problem. Make sure you have enough that you can tie a knot at the back. So you probably want at least this much left at the back to comfortably tie a knot. You always wanna tie a knot after every stitch and then trim it because having excess floss at the back will just cause you frustrations as you continue to work. So that's what my sunflower looks like and I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. So here's my second sunflower. Um, if you're like me and you found that as you've been stitching your fabric is starting to loosen up a bit, take the time to go around and tighten it. You'll just save yourself a lot of trouble. It's harder to stitch on fabric that's not nice and tight. So as you work on this project, you're probably going to need to retighten your fabric quite a bit. Here's what the back side looks like at this point. Honestly, don't worry about the back too much. Um, you may have some knots back there. It comes with the territory. No one will see that side. You really don't need to worry about it too much. And at the end of the project, we'll go back there and clean it up if we need to. So the next thing we're going to do are French knots in uh, the outside circle of our middle of the sunflower. And for that, I'm using DMC uh, 8, which is like a nice chocolate brown color. Um, so I've cut myself a strand of floss arm's length to my uh, shoulder. And for this, I'm going to be splitting it into twos. So separate two strands of floss and slowly pull them apart. For the project, we're going to be using French knots. Um, French knots are a tricky stitch that a lot of people struggle with. If you're not familiar with French knots, um, I do have a video on my account um, showing how I do them. Um, they take a bit of practice. So basically, we're going to do form 
um, a ring along the outside here of French knots. So again, I'm pulling back this part and I'm always starting underneath, it doesn't matter where. And I'm gonna come up through the fabric and all the way through. Now for a French knot, you kind of have to use both hands. So I'm gonna grab with my non-dominant hand about this much floss. I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna wrap it once, twice, holding firm. I'm going to find a spot close to where I came up, but not to the same hole. And I'm gonna poke through, still holding it firm like this. I'm gonna grab the needle from the bottom side and I'm slowly pulling through all the while I'm keeping this pressure until I get to the point where I can let it go. And there's your French knot. So I worked my way around the circle using French knots. As you can see, it's not completely perfect. Um, they're a hard knot to do. Um, I've left enough room at the back for me to trim and tie a knot. At this point in the project, you may be finding your fingers feel a little bit sticky or the needle feels a bit sticky. Um, unfortunately, that's a result of working with the stabilizer, which is sticky. And every time your needle passes through it, it brings back up some of that, um, that stickiness. So um, wash your hands and wipe off your needle periodically if that's bothering you. Um, as you may have just experienced going around with the French knots, um, this, it's kind of takes a lot of muscles. So um, if your hands are feeling tired, take a break. Um, I know it's difficult. Um, you're stitching on something that's a thicker material with a stabilizer near a seam, maybe if you've placed it the way I have, and it does take a little bit of finger strength. Okay, so now that I've done um, those two circles of the darker brown color, I'm gonna switch to DMC 840, and I'm gonna fill in the remainder of each circle with French knots um, using this color. So again, I'm using two strands of floss doubled over for this part as well, and I'm gonna start anywhere on the underside. Come up. Grab it about here with my non-dominant hand. Wrap once twice, holding it tight, picking a spot nearby, maintaining that tension, and pulling the needle through on the underside. And I'm gonna repeat that process until both centers are full of French knots. Um, don't worry, this is the hardest part of the project, and once it's over with, it's all smooth sailing from here. You got this. Okay guys, so now that the sunflowers are in, we can start working on the leaves. Um, so I'm going to be using 3362, um, and I've used, I've split the floss in half, so it's threes and they're doubled over. And I'm going to be using a fishbone stitch um, to do the leaves. So I'll just demonstrate that for you. So again, always starting underneath, I'm gonna start at the tip of the leaf. And I'm going to go down about a third of the way, approximately, and just do a straight stitch. Then I'm going to bounce back up to, it doesn't matter which side, but right next to where I first started, and pull it all the way through. And then I'm going to do a stitch about the same length that just ever so slightly crosses over that first initial stitch. And then I'm gonna to jump to the other side, pull it through, and do a stitch about the same length, same length that crosses over. And then I'll jump back again to that other side, pull it all the way through, and just continue this process going back and forth from side to side. And the idea being that by slightly crossing over the stitches, you're creating something that looks like a spine of a leaf. Which will cause your leaf to look just a little more realistic 
than it would say if we just used like a satin stitch or something like that. So as you can kind of start to see, the leaf is starting to take shape. As I get closer to the bottom here and I have less room, I'm going to make my stitches a little bit shorter. side. And there you go. So I'm going to repeat this process for the three leaves that require this color and then we'll switch to the lighter green shade. Okay so I've now done all my leaves using fishbone stitch. Um, I moved the hoop over um, in preparation to do this next leaf. Um, so we're going to be using DMC 500 for that and we're going to be starting with two strands of floss and doing back stitch for the stem. So as always I'm starting from the underside and pulling my floss all the way through and then I'm going to do a stitch about a centimeter long and pull it all the way down flat. Then I'm going to jump a stitch length away. So about here and come up all the way and then I'm going to go back through the tail end of my previous stitch and pull it down thus connecting the two stitches together so I'm jumping up about a stitch length which will be the end of our stem pulling it through and going back down through the tail of the previous stitch So I didn't do that totally neatly, but you can see the idea there. So continuing with the two strands of floss we're working with, um, we're going to do the leaves of this little plant using satin stitch. So basically it just means you're filling in a section of stitches or a section um, using straight stitches that have sort of a satiny type look to them, nice and flat. So I'll just start with the center one. And then I'm just going to pop up following the shape of the leaf. Just nice flat stitches filling in this shape. And I'll repeat this process for all of those leaves. Okay, so I'm now all finished the leaves and I'm going to be working on the lavender next using DMC 210. Um, I've split the floss in half so I've got um, three strands of floss doubled over and again always going to start underneath and for this we are just doing little straight stitches in V shapes. So I'm going to come down like this, pull it all the way tight, Oops. and make a V shape like that. And then just jump up to the next one.
for the last one, it's just a single stitch. And there we go. So I'll repeat the same for this one. What we're gonna do are the daisies and we'll start with the petals uh, using the DMC Blanc, um, which is just a white. Um, we're gonna split the floss into threes and double it up. And we're gonna do a very similar thing that we did with the sunflowers on these petals. So again, I'm always starting from the bottom. If your sticker is starting to come a little loose, just pat it back down. It should stick back to the, down to the fabric. Nice thick stitch. Um, you'll probably want to do more than what I've indicated here on the pattern. If you want to just do six stitches, that's fine. Um, but I think I'm going to do one in between each as well, just to give it a fuller look. I'm gonna go over top of that leaf a little bit. And one last stitch here. So next we're going to do the center of the daisy. And for that we're using DMC 781. Two strands of floss doubled over. And back to your favorite French knots. So. Coming up anywhere in the little circle there. Through the fabric. And I'm just pulling a bit through here, so I'm gonna pull it back. Hence the importance of doing your trimmings. I didn't tie a knot and trim that before I switched to the next stitch. And as a result, I was bringing the uh, floss up through the fabric. So just as a recap to using my non-dominant hand, wrapping once, twice, and going back down through the fabric. and pulling it tight like that. So I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the circle that way. Okay, everybody, so we are on our very last flower here. Um, it's the four uh, petaled honesty flower. And for it, I am using DMC 3713. Two strands of floss doubled over. And I'm gonna start with the petals and I'm using satin stitch. So again, we're always starting from underneath. Coming all the way through, I'm going to do the length of the petal. Let's come back down, oops, all the way through. And I'm just going to sort of get the shape here before I fill in the gaps.
The idea being to make it look as flat and satin-like as possible. And I'll repeat this process for each one of the petals. So once all your petals are in, um, you're going to be using DMC 3859. And I'm just using one strand of floss and I just doubled it over. And I'm using that just to make little highlight accents um, in the petals. So you can start wherever. using kind of a straight stitch and this is totally optional um, if you like the look of it you might have to do a few stitches in order to see it just to give it kind of a little more of a three-dimensional look. And so eventually you might have something that looks a little bit like this. What we're going to do before we wash off our stabilizer is go back to our DMC 840, um, split it into twos and overlap, and we're just going to fill in this center with French knots. If you aren't a pro by now, by the end of so by the end of this project, hopefully you are a French knot pro. And doing them on hats is probably adds an extra element of difficulty. So you can pat yourself on the back because it's not easy to do. And I think I'll probably just do four in here to fill it in. One last one. And we're done. So I've now washed off the stabilizer and here's my finished cap. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found it easy to follow. If you have any questions um, and you're working with a kit, feel free to ask me on Etsy. Um, I'm always here to help. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the project. And now you can look forward to wearing your hat. Okay, bye guys.